Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Glitched Velocity. I'm your host Wazahat and today in this video we are going to create our first basic shader for copper cube in HLSL language. So in my previous video we have discussed how we can write shaders in copper cube or what features copper cube provide us to write shaders in HLSL language. If you haven't already watched that video then go ahead and watch that video first by clicking this i button overlay on the top right corner of this video screen. So without further ado, let's jump right into the topic. Open up your notepad plus plus and the very first thing which we want to do right now is we are going to change our syntax highlighting language to HLSL. So go ahead and click this language button here and select HLSL as your syntax highlighting language. And what kind of shader which we are going to create? So we are going to create a basic shader which does pretty much nothing but changes color of an object according to our needs. And the very first line of code which we are going to write is a JavaScript variable. So I'm going to write var var vertex shader. And what this variable does is it tells Coppercube that whatever value this variable is holding is our vertex program or our vertex shader and in our vertex shader what we are going to do first is we are going to define our world view projection matrix by using a constant which copper cube provide us as m world view proj so i'm gonna create a new matrix by writing float 4 by 4 m world view proj and this is our world view projection matrix and the next thing which we are going to do is uh, we are going to create a struct vertex shader output a struct for vertex shader output so struct vs output vs output oops i made a mistake here and the struct so struct vs output and then we're gonna we know that we are going to output our position to our fragment shader so we're gonna define a new float 4 value position here so float 4 position and we are going to put it into our position slot so float 4 position will go in our position slot so float 4 position will go in our position slot and then we are going to create our vertex shader output main function so vs output main and it holds our incoming vertex position from the application so in float 4 so in float 4 v position which is our vertex position so v position and we are going to put it into our position slot so that's it and now we are going to define our output output function vertex shader output function so vs output output and then we are going to output our position this position to our fragment shader by multiplying our incoming position with our worldview projection matrix so output dot position will be equal to mule which is an intrinsic hlsl function to multiply two objects or values so we are going to multiply v position which is our incoming position from the application with our worldview projection matrix so m worldview proj and then we are going re to return this output so return output and that's it we have come successfully written our vertex shader and now we are going to write our fragment shader so we need to create another javascript variable so var fragment shader my typing speed is a little bit slow so please don't mind it so var fragment shader and what this variable does is it tells whatever value this variable is holding is our pixel shader code or or fragment shader and in this variable fragment shader or you can say in our pixel shader code the first thing which we are going to write is our struct for pixel shader output so struct ps output so struct ps output is our structure 
for our pixel shader output and we know that we are going to change the color for object so we are going to output the color so i'm going to create a new float4 value you also know that color is a float4 value so float4 color and we are going to put into color zero slot so color will go in our color zero slot and then we are going to define our pixel shader output main function so ps output main and then we are going to use incoming v position or you can say incoming position from our vertex shader in this main function of pixel shader output so we are going to create or define float 4 position which will be coming from our position slot so position and then we are going to define our pixel shader output output function so ps output output and then we are going to do our calculation or maths in this function so we know that we are going to output our color so we need to define a value for our color so we need to define red green blue and alpha value for a color so i'm going to create a new float4 value float4 call is equal to sorry it should be call not wall float4 call is equal to float4 and we are going to change color of our object to red and we know that 1.0,0.0,0.0.1.0 is a value for our red color because the red channel is one which makes it completely bright and this 0.0, .0 is our green channel then we have blue channel then we have alpha channel so we have one zero zero values for our rgb values and which makes red color and then we are going to output this color into this color value or you can say to our screen so in order to do that we are going to use output dot color is equal to call and then we are going to return the output so return output that's it we have successfully write our pixel shader code and now we need to create a material from this shader code which we have just written with our variable vertex shader and with our fragment shader so i'm going to use javascript api of copper cube to create a new material so variable material you can name it whatever you want it is not at all necessary that you use the same name for all of these variables but this main function should not be changed you have to use the main name here for your function main and main in your pixel shader and in your vertex shader as well because this main is used by copper cube to assign techniques and passes to your vertex shader or into your pixel shader so variable material is equal to ccb create material ccb create material please make sure that you don't make any typing errors or typos in your code so ccb create material we need to define our vertex shader and our fragment shader and our material type and our shader callback so our vertex shader is this variable here so just copy it and paste it here put a comma then we are going to use our fragment shader variable then copy it and paste it here then we are going to use a material type so zero is for solid so we are going to use solid material type and we don't have any shader callback function so we are going to use null for our shader callback function and then we are going to apply this material to some object so to apply that first we need to call that object into our code so 
in order to do that i'm gonna create a new variable cube and then i'm gonna call it by its name so ccb get scene node from name and we know that the name of our cube mesh is cube mesh one so cube mesh one and then we going we are going to assign this material to our cube by using this javascript api of copper cube so ccb set scene node i make so many mistakes while typing this so ccb set scene node material property material property oops property and then we need to define our object and then material index then the property type which we are going to change and the new property value so first of all our object is cube and then the material index will be zero and then the material property will be type and we are going to change it with our newly created material which is our variable material from here that's it we have successfully created our first shader code but it will not work in your application until or unless you stringify or convert this hlsl code in this variable vertex shader and in this variable fragment shader into strings so now we are going to convert them into strings by going over here and holding down alt shift and down arrow key till here and then use quotes and then we are going to do the same for new line segments i'm gonna hold down alt shift and down arrow key till here and then right arrow key and then i'm gonna use uh n oops i made a mistake so what i'm gonna do and then n and then quotes and then plus and make sure this semicolon appear as black not as gray so that you know that your string ends here and then do the same for fragment shader hold down alt shift till here put quotes then do the new line new string segment here hold on alt shift down arrow key till here and use and quotes plus and then insert a quote here so that this semicolon is black and yep our code is pretty much complete so let me just quickly give it a review that i haven't did a typing mistake so we have a typo here this is going to be vs output and uh we have done mistake everywhere so vs output vs output vs output and then it should be vs output as well so that and then we are going to return the position output position and then we are going to return the output so yep everything seems all right here we are multiplying our v position with world view projection return the output then in fragment shader ps output 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 let's just copy this whole code and go to our copper cube editor select our cube go to behavior and then attach a behavior triggered by events when a key is pressed do something key press should be f and then attach special execute javascript command here hope it should work fine and if i test application now and 
if i press f this cube this cube should turn into red but it sh it says me that ccb sets in node material property is not defined because we have a typo here which is we need to fix this property and the whole code is fine so just quickly check it by pressing f so now the color for object is changed to red and if you want to change it to blue we have to just change the color values here change it from 0.0, .0 and change the blue value to 1.0 and then again copy this and paste it in our action javascript action and now if i run the application and press f this will turn into blue but there is still something missing and that something is that the texture disappears texture doesn't come up so in the next video we will be doing the texture and hopefully this is the end of this video series or not the series but this particular video end of this particular video so we have successfully written our first shader which does pretty much nothing but changes the color of an object according to this float for color value and in the next video i will show you how to use texture and how to convert your shader into action so that you don't have to change your value by going into this code every time so that you can just put value into an action just like here your instead of key it says color and then you can put color values here and it will instantly change in your code so in the next video i will be showing you how to convert your shader into actions and how to use textures within your shaders hopefully you understand the video and if you like the video then please don't forget to give it thumbs up and if you are new to channel please subscribe that will help me a lot so that's it. Bye-bye. Peace out.